Good evening everyone. Our topic tonight is about signs you can't ignore. I just want to remind and uh, refresh us that the goal of this live stream is to review the doctrines because in I just uh, recently read in Matthew 13 in the parable of the sower that Jesus himself says that those who don't understand the doctrines will be taken away by Satan. So the easiest way to solve the backsliding and uh, apostasy problem given that verse is to help each other understand the doctrines and I think one of the best ways to for me to understand and remember the doctrines is to teach it myself I encourage you to also teach it yourself so if somebody will learn it's okay but most of the time I'm the one who is learning I'm just sharing what I am reading so as we start let us pray our Father in heaven we ask that you forgive us from our sins be merciful to us, Lord. Please send the Holy Spirit so that uh, to, to possess me, Lord, and also those listeners and viewers. Uh, thank you for your, the Bible. Thank you for the opportunity to study. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> Signs you can't ignore. Signs of Jesus' return. In uh, 1938, there was a Halloween radio drama by Orson Welles aired from New York and much of uh, it was uh, news bulletins suggesting that uh, there was an invasion by alien Martians. The radio actors sounded so real that many believed that the story was true. So many people panicked across the country and some even tried to commit suicide. Some went to remote areas of the country and the Navy canceled shore leave for the fleet in the New York Harbor. But it was all just fiction. Martians hadn't invaded and it was sent the end of the world as uh, they thought. Uh, the question, my friends, of how long the world will end has fascinated and frightened many throughout centuries. Today, there is concern that climate change will eventually destroy life on planet Earth. Some fear we will destroy ourselves in a nuclear war. Others say we'll run out of food and other resources as world population continues to explode. Still others are afraid we may be wiped out as a huge comet or asteroid collides with the earth today there is concern that climate change will eventually destroy life and planet earth some are afraid that it might be nuclear war some think are afraid that it might be a worldwide pandemic others say we will we might run out of food and all resources as the world population continues to explode others also are afraid that we might be wiped out by a huge comet or asteroid that collides with the earth but most of us of course have uh, so many other things to worry about we struggle with just trying to make a living or with sickness and grief and death but for many of us life isn't easy <clears throat> sometimes we even find ourselves wishing the world would end <laughs> some surely life wasn't meant to be so full of pain and hunger and weariness and stress we want a better world the good news, my friend, is that the world is going to end. <laughs> and there is a better world coming. In fact, a God of love has not tried to keep information from us. Instead, he has given signs of the end and warnings about the end so that no one needs to be surprised or caught unprepared. God desperately wants you to be part of that better world that he has promised. And even when his warnings seem severe, or the way he describes end-time conditions seems harsh, it's only because God 
loves us enough to tell us the truth. If your child was crossing the road and about to be hit by a car, wouldn't you speak soft comforting words? Or you'll shout a warning and as loudly and urgently as possible because you love your child and want to save him or her. So just how this world as we know it, just how will this world as we know it come to an end? Tonight, we are going to look at the Bible's predictions about how the world will end. And I think you will agree with me that the prophecies given nearly 2,000 years ago are in fact accurate. One day, Jesus and his disciples were in Jerusalem. The disciples were commenting on the magnificent temple which had been enlarged by the Roman government. Gazing at this incredible building, Jesus made a startling statement to his disciples. He said, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another. He said, Do not Okay, I'm done with it. That shall not be thrown down. So all the stones will be removed. Matthew 24, 2. This was the greatest building in the Jewish nation. And Jesus predicted it would be completely destroyed. The disciples were shocked. As they followed Jesus up the Mount of Olives, they asked him the question that all of us would have asked. Matthew 24, 3. Tell us. When will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming, and of the end of the age? You see, the disciples were sure that Jerusalem, with its temple, would last forever, one day ruling the nations until the end of the world. They were, cert they were certain that the destruction Jesus foretold would take place when the whole world was destroyed. But as we study this passage more closely, we will find that Jesus was actually speaking of two different events. One of them was his second coming, his return to earth in glory, as you see in the picture, and establishment of the everlasting kingdom here on earth. The other one, the second, however, was one that would be seen by many of the people alive at that time. It was the destruction of the city of Jerusalem and their beloved temple. First, let's look at what he said about the destruction of Jerusalem. He said in Matthew 24, 15 and 16, Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. <clears throat> then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Daniel had predicted that Jerusalem would be destroyed. And now Jesus reminds his disciples that the prophet Daniel's warnings would be soon fulfilled. So Jesus continued, Matthew 24, 17 and 18, Let him look, let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. So in other words, he told them to flee for their lives because when they saw the armies encircling the city of Jerusalem, the destruction was right upon them. In Luke's account, Luke 21, 20 to 24, Jesus said, But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know its desolation is near. Then they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations and jerusalem will be trampled by the gentiles until the times of the gentiles are fulfilled luke 21 20 to 24 so how would jesus words be fulfilled <clears throat> from history in ad 66 approximately 33 years after jesus gave this prediction the roman armies armies under cestius <clears throat> the Roman government of Syria came to put down a rebellion that had broken out in Jerusalem. And they, as they laid siege against the city, however, the city withstood the ravages of the Roman army. And finally, the Roman armies withdrew 
despairing of actually being able to take the city. Those who followed in the instruction given by Jesus saw the opportunity and left the city, escaping the slaughter of its inhabitants when the Roman army destroyed it four years later. Over a million are believed to have been killed in the terrible siege of AD 70. If only they had obeyed Jesus' instruction to flee the city, here is a striking lesson on the importance of studying and believing the prophecies. Those who believed Christ and watched for the signs he foretold were saved, while the unbelieving lost their lives. It will be the same in the end of time. <clears throat> Watchful believers will be delivered while the careless and unbelieving will die. What about the magnificent temple? What happened? Titus, the Roman general in charge of taking the city of Jerusalem, had given orders to save the temple. But one of his soldiers threw a lighted torch through the door. And the temple was soon a raging fire in order to save the gold that melted from the dome and and run in between the stones the huge blocks of granite and marble had to be pried apart not one stone was left upon another Jesus predictions to his disciples 40 years earlier had been fulfilled exactly how about the second part of Jesus prophecy regarding the end of the world jesus gave a number of clear signs that would take place before the destruction of jerusalem and before the end of the world so that his followers could know when the time was very near we would do well to pay attention to his predictions okay let's take a closer look first jesus said there would be political strife and conflict in Matthew 24, 7. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places. Recent decades have seen the rise of bloodshed and wars. The 20th century was the bloodiest century in human history. Some 70 million perished just in the two world wars in the most significant uh, scientifically advanced and educated societies we still see violence and hatred and bloodshed this is one of the signs of the times <clears throat> but not there wouldn't be only an increase in war near the end of time there would be also the rise of suffering caused by natural disasters jesus said there will be famines in matthew 24 7 and there are famines in many parts of the world. The world's population continues to explode. It's estimated that over 150,000 a day or 7 million per year die from starvation. And even of the billions who survive, it is estimated that 60% are malnourished. <clears throat> Jesus said that families would be one of the signs, famines would be one of the signs of the end. The next sign Jesus predicted was an increase in diseases. There will be famines and pestilences, Matthew 24, 7. The word pestilence is another word for plague or terrible disease. And in spite of all the modern medicine can do, AIDS, malaria, pneumonia, tuberculosis, Ebola, syphilis, gonorrhea, cholera, SARS, and even strains of flu have killed millions <clears throat> The social and economic cost of lifestyle disease are the result of our choices in diet and health habits are rapidly increasing. But perhaps the most troubling are the diseases for which we know neither the cause nor the cure. Some of these diseases may be the result of the way we polluted our planet. Even this environmental deterioration was predicted in God's word. Isaiah 51, 6 says, Lift up your eyes to the heaven and look on the earth beneath, beneath. For the heavens will vanish away like smoke. The earth will grow old like a garment. Isaiah 51, 6. 
Indeed, air and water pollution take a heavy toll on the health of the planet and its inhabitants. Jesus also said that there will be increased earthquakes as well. And there will be earthquakes in various places. Matthew 24, 7. It's not that there weren't earthquakes before. It's just that they have been happening more often in recent centuries. The earthquakes are also getting stronger and causing much more damage. Thousands and even tens of thousands are dying in one quake or tsunami. In the last 90 years alone, earthquakes have caused more than 1.5 million deaths. Luke also says Jesus' prediction, And there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences. And there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea, and the waves rolling, or tsunami, eh? All across the globe, we have seen extraordinary weather, just as Jesus predicted. Typhoons, hurricanes, with their tidal surges, tsunamis, tornadoes, and volcanoes, all taking a great toll in property and lives. But the Bible gives us yet another sign, deteriorating morality, ethics at the end of time. Jesus compared conditions on earth in the last days to Sodom and Gomorrah, two cities that were so sinful that God finally destroyed them with the fire from heaven. Luke 17, 28-30 Likewise, as it was in also in the days of Lot, even so will it be in the day of when the Son of Man is revealed, Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, in a similar manner to this, have been having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh. For men will be lovers of themselves. <clears throat> this is another one. And we inspect in the last days the world to have a low standard of morality. Greed, vice, and selfishness will be common. Lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying its power. 2 Timothy 3, 2-5 There will be even many scums and scammers before the end. <laughs> 2 Timothy 3, 13 But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse. Deceiving and being deceived. So it sounds like uh, a lot of it uh, happening today, right? In yet another sign in the last days, Christ warned about spiritual deception, false Christs and false prophets. <clears throat> Matthew 24, 23, 24. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. For false Christs, <clears throat> and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive even the very elect. Today, the religious world is full of teachers leading away from the plain and simple teaching of the Bible. Religion in many cases has become a money-making business and it's hard to see any difference between spirituality and entertainment. Many follow the most popular preacher or the one who promises the greatest financial success. We need to be sure that we are following the Word of God. The last and the greatest of all the signs we will look at today is Jesus' prediction that the Gospel will be taken to all the world. <clears throat> Matthew 24, 14 And this Gospel of the Kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations and then the end will come in the book of revelation god gives a description of this great announcement revelation 14 6 then i saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven 
having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth to every nation tribe tongue and people revelation 14 6 today this final sign of the end is being fulfilled as well even by this very live stream this is a part of taking the gospel everlasting gospel to every creature the gospel is being proclaimed by tv radio evangelistic meetings the internet personal bible studies even correspondence courses around the world we are really living in the times that jesus foretold we are living in the last days and the final great events are taking place around us just compared our day to the days of noah jesus compared our day to the days of noah the people in noah's day were busy making a living and going about their daily routines with not much time for spiritual things <clears throat> jesus said in matthew 24 37 to 39 but as the days of noah were so also will the coming but as the days of noah were so also will the coming of the son of man be for as in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage until the day that noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took all them away <clears throat> so also will be the coming of the son of man be before the flood the world was going about life as it would continue the same forever there was no urgency no priority for spiritual things and that's how we came we can expect the majority of the world to be living <clears throat> in the last days just before jesus comes before jesus first coming there were signs that the time was near god sent angels and wise men to let his people know about the messiah's birth but sad to say john 1 11 says he came to his own and his own did not receive him john 1 11 they were not ready for his coming they had ignored the signs friends let's not be like uh, god's people back then let's be ready for his second coming he has given us all these signs which tell us that his coming is soon because he loves us so much he warned us not to be self-satisfied and half-hearted in our spiritual walk and in our moral choices he wants to spend eternity with us that's why he has given us all these signs that he is about to return jesus said in matthew 24 34 and 33 when you see all these things know that it is near at the doors matthew 24 okay assuredly i say to you this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place will we be ready to receive him this time or will he be disappointed again the hour is late and the stakes are high there is not one moment to lose there was a boat a ship named central america it sailed out on new york harbor and was heading south in the atlantic toward the panama canal when she sprang a leak Another vessel was saw her distress signal and came up close to that other ship. The captain of the rescue ship sent a message. What's wrong? The answer came back. We are in bad repair and going down. But wait until the morning. <clears throat> the rescue ship could see the ship uh, moving in the water. Let me take your passengers on board now. But night had fallen and the captain of the central america ship did not want to take the risk of transferring the passengers in the dark he replied just wait till the morning so the other captain sent a message 
please let me take your passengers but he was refused again so he just had to wait some distance from the other ship and his people were looking at the other ship and looking at the lights about one and a half hour later those lights disappeared and the ship had gone down everybody with the ship so to wait may end up being lost forever there are times when you have to make a decision now the captain of that ship thought it wasn't a problem to wait until morning he was sadly mistaken the bible says today is the day of salvation don't wait my friend don't hesitate don't delay why not make your decision for christ now you won't won't you lift your heart to god right now and ask him to prepare you to help prepare you for christ's soon coming tonight my friends i want you i want to say to jesus thank you lord for providing a savior for my certain death i want to let you save me jesus my friends if that is your desire would you like to join me in the prayer tonight let's pray our father in heaven we thank you for the signs in the bible and the warning and jesus prophecy about the time of the end we ask you that you continue to prepare us lord inform us about the signs and uh, fix our hearts lord help us to prioritize you over everything else thank you for hearing our prayers in jesus name we pray amen